My name's Steve Mann and welcome to Paper Classroom. We're in the uh, water and chemical additives section at the moment and what we're going to do now is in this tutorial look at the equipment that's used in influent treatment. I think just before we start it's worth mentioning the three different types of water that we find in the mill. There's influent, which is the water that comes into the mill from outside sources. There's process water, that's the water that's carrying the fibre and is actively in use within the process. And there's effluent, and that's the water that we have no use for anymore and we're discharging legally. And what we're going to deal with in this particular tutorial is influent. And we're going to look at the equipment that's used for the uh, treatment of influent. Of course, we often uh, start with a mill pond. And in the mill pond, we might choose to add some flocculating chemicals and water that we take out of the mill pond, we might treat with uh, biocides, maybe things like uh, chlorine dioxide. Having passed through the mill pond, then we may go to some form of uh, settling arrangement, maybe a, a settling tank. There are three essential shapes to settling tanks. There are rectangular settling tanks, there are round settling tanks and then there's these boxy like uh, lamella settling tanks. This is a rectangular settling tank and what's happening here is the raw water comes in at this end of the settling tank. It slowly moves this way until it finally gets to the weir and clear water overflows. Now what's happening in this space is that the particles of dirt and debris are slowly settling out. Now the large particles settle first and the small particles take longer to settle and this is Stokes law I'll show you that in a moment on the next slide but when you are designing these tanks and you're calculating the length of this then what you need to know is what's the smallest particle that you need to settle then you need to calculate the flow rate so you know how long it needs to travel for till it gets below the weir and then you can calculate this particular length. <clears throat> so the raw water, the raw water comes in here, it settles, this thing then drags the sludge down this way and then that's treated. So this is Stokes law. Stokes law says that the settling rate of a particle in a fluid is inversely proportional to its particle size. In other words, big things settle quickly, small things settle slowly. So there's my little sort of animation, not very good, but you get the idea. The big, as the water is traveling this way, carrying the particles with it, the big particles settle fastest that one's settled down to there, that one's only gone that far because it's small, that one's still on top. And hopefully by the time it gets to here, it'll be below the level, it'll be below the level of that weir, and therefore we'll get clear water coming over the end. So that's Stokes Law. This is another type of settling tank. And this one is a round one. If you can imagine, a, this is a section through a round tank. This is the centre. So this is the inlet. This here is the distribution channel. This is the uh, the sludge screw. This thing travels from out backwards and forwards, gathering the sludge and bringing it into the sludge collection point here. This is the overflow weir. And here is the discharge point. So water comes in here, there's a baffle, and that will reduce the amount of turbulence because one of the things that's essential 
for all these types of uh, settling tanks or clarifiers is that we have laminar flow, not turbulent flow, but laminar flow. Laminar flow means that all the flow is in layers, all going in one direction, no turbulence. So by getting laminar flow, you'll get good settling and then that can be scooped up and taken away. So that's a round settling tank. This is a uh, lamella device for settling, uh, uh, settling particles. And at level two, you need to know the three different shapes of settling tank. So you've got the rectangular, you've got the, the round, and you've got the lamella type. You need to know that the settling rate is governed by Stokes law. And you need to be able to label one of these devices. Uh, sometimes they'll give you that. You wouldn't be asked to draw one at this stage, but they would give you the drawing and they, they would ask you to label the relevant parts. Once you've been through the settling regime, there will be really fine particles that it's, it's you know, you would never ever settle out. And therefore it's very common to have a sand filter. So with a sand filter, what we do here, we have sort of large rocks and smaller rocks and smaller rocks, and essentially, and so eventually, sand here. So the raw water comes in, carrying these tiny little particles. This is just to spread the water out, so you don't get the, you don't dig a big hole here. And what will happen is, as the water permeates through the sand, the small particles will get trapped between the sand particles. And therefore you'll get clear water coming out and going this way. If all the channels between the sand are getting filled with the small particles, eventually the channels will be blocked. And so the flow rate from here will go slower and slower until the rate is unacceptable. At that point, the mill will go and move on to another sand filter because they typically have at least three. They'll move on to another sand filter, start again, and this one will then be back washed. So we'll close that valve, we'll close this valve, we'll flush water in and up. That will churn up all the sand, take out all the little bits that have been trapped and then we'll wash them away down here. Once the water starts coming through clear, we'll stop the washing process, give time for this sand to settle back again. And by the time that happens, the last sand filter that they were using will just, start in, will just be starting to get blocked. And therefore they'll switch over to this one and carry out a cleaning procedure on the last one. So that takes care of sand filters. So that's uh, all I want to say for the moment. That's a quick introduction to the equipment used for water coming into the mill. Uh, this is going to be followed by two other short videos. One talking about equipment that we use within the process to clear up or clean up process water. And then finally, one on equipment used for the effluent. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Thank you for watching. And we look forward to seeing you in more of our videos. Bye for now.